What's up, y'all? Kind of a late recording, but I thought I'd start it here. Um, some Omnisphere stuff. And then, obviously, the road samples I use a lot, so... I'm chilling, dog. Just a uh, steady grind. You know, I'm officially on summer break. I finished my junior year of university, so I'm going to be a senior next year. Really excited about that. Feels good to be done with that COVID year. That shit was so dumb. <laughs> it was such a it was such a stupid year, dude. Um, but it feels really good to be back. So here's this one little layer. Little little Atmos pluck. Let me have these other ones here. And then another layer here, if you layer them. And then obviously these all layered. Yeah, bass is just... Obviously drums, we have a perk I made from scratch, kind of. It's just like two different rims I found, that XG snare and a TL rims. I don't even know what the fuck these are, but they were in my library and they worked. So combined, they sound like this. And then obviously I got the kick drum. It's been pitched, so it's, in, it's actually like tuned. And then obviously the kick to get that punchiness. <laughs> More lanterns. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I can do stuff like that. Um, right now, I'm just like messing around. What's up, everyone? But yeah, so this is how everything sounds, you know, together. And this is going to be for vocals as well, so... I'm gonna try to get some like nice atmospheric vocals and kind of tell a story throughout this thing. <laughs> Ram with Strello, yeah, that one was fun. I also had a pitched down version in here. I just want to see what it sounded like when it was pitched. It sounds kind of cool. basically just like resampled it and just put in another little little group. Now I want to break down more elements. Uh, there's this sound here. This is a sound I made back when I was making Moon Theme with Chief. Um, I made it with the Rhodes synth, uh, Rhodes, literally just a Rhodes, but it turned out to, like, it turned into a synth sound basically. I really can't remember how I made it specifically, but I use this in like almost every track I make. Um, ironically, it fits in everything. So, I mean, you'll see, like, I'll, let me just play it. recorder for this hey thanks man I like the hey I know I know exactly what you're talking about yeah <laughs> yeah I'm trying to figure out what else I want to add like I feel like um, it's pretty flesh I could probably add some more pianos let me just like collapse this stuff real quick um, we're going to go in, and I'm probably going to erase this pitch section just because it's just extra material I don't need. Um, also, let's open everything up again and freeze all the MIDI just so that my computer can not have a seizure because every time I have so much MIDI from, like, Omnisphere or Keyscape, it's 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 like, bro, I, I can't. I can't handle it, man. And 
Like, my computer sounds like an airplane taking off right now. I could laugh. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm trying not to add too much just because I want to add vocals in here, and I'm trying to keep it as minimal as possible yet still having some complexity. I feel like if there's too many little moving parts, um, it could get too busy. I'm, I'm keeping it super raw so that once we get the vocals kind of worked on, written, um, this the song will kind of form itself around the vocals, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, all those little elements, all little details, shit like that definitely will be added on once we kind of get to that stage, if that makes sense. Um, all right, cool. So let's... Okay, so I'm trying to figure out what would be a good, another good sound. I mean, I'm definitely getting a guitar recorder for this. I don't play guitar, so obviously I can't record it myself, which kind of sucks, but we can try to figure out an alternative. Um, I do got Keyscape. I mean, I always use this thing. We could... We could... Hmm... We could pull on some Omnisphere again and just see what we can find. <laughs> Perfect. That's exactly what I've been looking for. <laughs> Default pass. Um, okay, so they have guitars, but it's not nearly what you would want. I want like a nice analog. I want like just like really like subtle. Oh yeah, like vocals, vocals, boss. Like uh, think of like Petite Biscuit, how he kind of does his thing. That's kind of like what I'm going for here. All right. Um, I don't even know if I want that. Hits and bits. It's fun to just explore. You'll find some weird things. Cool, let's see here. Just copy the audio, the MIDI from here, and just see if I can just, uh, whoop. and then we'll get rid of all the low end to kind of make sure it doesn't get muddy. And then I'm, now we're, we're gonna go through the sounds and just see. So we got. Okay, too much. That sound. I want to just turn into audio and see if what we can do it. I like the I like the play in audio a lot. I feel like uh, it's just a fun way to mess with stuff. I'm on I'm on stream right now. You gotta go. I'm I'm live. People can hear me. I can go whenever. Yeah, I, I did have a schedule, but I didn't follow it at all. There's, a few, there's, there's like four people watching, three people watching right now. Not many, but... No, I have my camera. I don't have a camera right now. I, I don't want to show my face anymore on stream. Yeah, they can hear you. Can you please, can you please go? Thank you. Sorry, that's my little sister. Um, Here we go. So I'm going to do this.
So, Ableton stock compressor. People ask how I get my kicks to come through the mix. Um, side chaining, obviously, that's like the key. Um, most people know what side chain is. I've run to a fair amount of people though that don't know what side chain is. And basically, it's with a side chain compressor. Basically, what it allows it to do is that it will just cause the sound. So, like, I put this compressor on the sound that I want to cut through. So, this synth thing here. I want it to cut through. I want the drums to cut through this, specifically the kick and the snare. So we got the kick here. I always EQ um, at 80 hertz because it always cuts at like the range I want. Um. And then attack is kind of fast. I like to sustain a little bit, a little bit slower. Um, Q we can turn down a little bit. Back in, and we'll just change the group. I think the snare group is 22, yeah. And then we'll just pull it off a little bit because I'm not trying to. like some cool like maybe like an arp would be some kind of sick it, it's just fun i'm just adding a bunch of random layers so we're just gonna see where it goes i've got a bunch of really cool freezes as well you know in ableton when you freeze and flatten stuff basically that means that you're applying whatever plugins you had on the audio onto the audio so it'll reprint let's say you had a midi piano just a steady note c you put a reverb on there it's obviously in midi there's obviously a plugins you know it's active and when you freeze and flatten it, it basically just prints it the audio with that reverb applied. So a cool way to, you know, capture sounds, for me at least, is to, um, you know, apply those sounds and then freeze and flatten and then, you know, capture the tail end. So like, for instance, with this sound here, this was like a reverb tail off of a road. So it's not the actual input signal. It's the after effects, which gives it that really spacey sound. Um that's a nice way to, I like to capture stuff that way. Um, I have a bunch of, a bunch of random freezes here. It's fun to just go through and just try to find something that might work. Ooh, I have an idea actually. Yes, I made this in Serum a while back. Oh, I know what that's from. Hold on. <laughs> I gotta find that, actually. Yeah, I'll put this one on pause for now. I kinda wanna go through other tracks and just see what else we got. I haven't worked, there's a lot of tracks that I've just like made and then they're there, but I don't finish them. So <laughs> I feel like that's a problem that a lot of people deal with. But we're gonna go in here, we're gonna do, yeah, day created, it's already organized. Um, Let's just explore. This might be the one I'm looking for. I started naming my tracks based on the date I create them, just so if I'm not looking at it based off a of date creation, I know when it was created. Um, it doesn't really help with anything else. That's not looking for. Yeah, see what I mean? <laughs> it doesn't help at all. Um, not the dark mind thing. Yeah, see, there's so many of these. Let's just go through. Oh, damn. <laughs> Let's see if we can find it. <laughs> There's just one project I'm looking for that I... That one sound I was messing around with, that's what it was from. And I was like, oh, shit, I forgot I didn't finish that. Let me check my, uh, my SoundCloud. It's on my SoundCloud. I know that for a fact. And I had the, uh... The, the project named whatever the, uh the date was so okay it's not that one it might be this one maybe unlikely oh that's on my soundcloud Let's see here 
What else do we got? Yeah, 4921. That's the project. Um, here we go. This is one I'm going to probably put on my album uh, coming at the end of... Well, I'm kind of debating on when I want to drop it, but I'm thinking it would release like mid-October, late October of this year, and then this local EP that I'm doing would drop in end of end of the school year probably towards the spring this next spring so almost basically in a year from now gives me plenty of time yeah this is it bypass the master if y'all you want to see what my master is actually doing to the audio here um it's doing a lot actually just check it out yeah so um it's really drastic obviously because this markup that's definitely why the markup here is you know really really obvious um but every time I start a project, I always start with like, I always cap myself at five tracks. So I'll start the idea. And then once I hit five tracks, or at least five melodic, in, you know, inputs, I'll add an OTT. I kind of just brighten and tighten. That's what I call it. And then I always add a compressor once I get past the drum stage. And then this kind of just keeps like my drums. It just tightens up everything else a little bit more. And then after that, um, I obviously just added this in because I forgot, but usually I add a soothe after my compressor. Um, it doesn't really cut a bunch, but it just literally soothes everything, so it just makes sure that all those really harsh frequencies are a little bit tamed. It doesn't really mess with dynamics, as you can as you can hear. I always cut around 300 and 500. Um, those tend to be the most muddy frequencies in my mind. And just, I mean, generally, they tend to be the most, like, muffled frequencies. So when these are really controlled, they kind of create a lot of headroom, which is key for me. I just like having headroom in my mixes. Um, utility to mess with. I don't know why the gain is up, but I think it's just to boost a little bit more, which is fine, I guess. And then the width, which I always mess with. I always have stereo width a little bit tighter in the intros and, you know, in breaks and stuff like that just to kind of create, you know, a dynamic contrast with the rest of the track. You know, if everything was the same, not really an issue, but I just like playing with the width so that when everything comes in, it's just wider, hits a little bit harder. Um, OTT, like, this is the gem here. Like, without this thing... Let me show y'all. It's 
so key. And then a big thing I've been doing a lot recently, at least, is metering. So um, if I can recommend anything, so Isotope on YouTube has a just a playlist of videos that's made by them. They have a really good mastering engineer and just mixing engineer, um, you know, that just works in-house for them. And he just explains everything, basically things you should do, things you shouldn't do, just the general just knowledge he just passes on, which is useful. And he always promotes like metering, which is nice because you can just, just visually see what you're doing. With this master chain, it creates a really super consistent flow of audio. And for me, you know, the master process, a lot of people rely really heavily on the mastering process. And, you know, that's not a bad thing, but I feel like if you can, it's so like my mentor taught me that you want to kind of do things preemptively in a way so that when you're doing work later on, it's not as hard to make up for what you're trying to do. So for instance, if let's say your mix was just like super not level and like the drums were just crazy high and everything was really quiet and the levels are kind of janky and you go to the mastering stage and you're really relying on the mastering process to clean up everything, um, the mastering stage just needs to work a little bit harder since you didn't do that work initially. So I like to just do a little bit of you know pre-mastering while I mix so that when I go to the mastering stage, Things are already kind of taken care of for me in a little bit of a way. You know, it kind of just makes it easier to master and I get more consistent results. I feel like whenever I have really just extreme peaks and stuff like that, um, the mastering process, it just needs the limiter needs to work harder. Um, I just notice there's more artifacts. It just this just helps me get a cleaner master. So if I can recommend anything is just try to boost your mix in a way that allows you to have an easier mastering process and i master all my own music and i do a lot of i actually have a mastering service you know shameless plug but if anyone needs mastering i do that shit for you know for 40 bucks a track pretty cheap but i do a pretty good job and this is kind of like my prelim stage you kind of want to prepare for everything you want to kind of just work in advance for every stage so like the like the premix all, all this stuff um i work really sporadically so there's no like right or wrong um but yeah, I gotta finish this guy. I completely forgot this guy existed. <laughs> yeah, the little plucks. It takes me about half an hour to do one track. Um, you know, I have a lot of settings that I kind of keep the same across every track. Um, I use Pro L2 for my mastering, and I actually set my settings the same as I would for um, like usual mastering. But obviously, given the tracks, like it, it really depends on what you know what track I'm actually mastering. You know, some have really crazy peaks, some don't. So you kind of want to adjust these depending on, um, you know, what you're going for. I feel like, you know, longer release leads to more consistency with dynamics. But I've noticed that these settings warrant me the best outcomes. Um, there's been like, I've done a lot of masters where it's just like these settings, like across the board. And it's really good. I've had no issues. Um, I always, if you use Pro L2, I always use transparent I feel like anyone that makes their mix, you know, they want their master to sound as close to the original mix, but better, you know, and these other modes in my mind just kind of alter it a little bit too much. I feel like I make my mixes in a way that I want it to sound exactly the same after the master, 
but I just want the master to enhance it. You know, I don't want to change it in a way. So I've noticed like it always starts on modern. That's the default on this plugin. And modern just does too much for me. I'm not really a fan of it. So I like transparent. It's actually not even working right now. Like these settings aren't even working on the audio because there's no actual limiting happening. But occasionally when I, when I mix, I'll boost the audio just to see how my track interacts with the limiter, just to see if there's anything I should, you know, fix. You know, it's just preemptive stuff. I've noticed that if I can pre-visualize what my limiter is going to do to my mix when I get to that stage, it kind of just lets me prepare. I, I, I do things differently. I'll, I'll go in and I'll shape things a, a certain way to make sure that my limiter reacts a certain way. Um, like I can literally show you here. Let me just turn this all off. So I actually recently I realized 125 is like the like the nice middle ground. 500 was a little bit too long, um, but uh, longer release is good for tracks that are already pretty level. If it's not level, um, the longer release will just cause the ducking to be more noticeable, especially when there's like really hard kicks and shit like that. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely say my mastering process is kind of varying, but for like half an hour, which is like not you know it. It doesn't really matter how long it takes you. It matters the end result. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so that's one track. I've been working on this other thing recently. I think it's... I, I think it's this thing. It's like an EDM intro. It's kind of like a cool little thing. So, like, I'm trying to play at festivals... Um, in the coming years, and my mentor plays at Lollapalooza every year, and he's a big EDM, like, dubstep trap guy, so I've been trying to just, like, prepare, you know, he was like, when you're 21, you can play sets with me, I'm like, all right, man, no doubt, let's do it, and um, I was like, let me just make a cool intro, like, an intro track for if I were to do a set or if he were to do a set, and this is kind of what I whipped up, um, if it loads. There we go. Yeah, kind of, uh, this, this is definitely not lo-fi. Just, just letting you know. But it's fun to explore other genres. You learn other mixing and just production techniques by, ma by just, you know, experimenting. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I know. I think uh, my biggest thing, I like catchiness. I feel like simplicity is, you know, the key. I feel like the songs I like the most are the ones that are the most simple or at least the most, like, it's hard to explain. I think like, like Legos, you know, when something's very well engineered and very well built, but it's not like super complex. It's a sturdy, you know, it has a lot of like, it's just built well. And I just like building things that are simple catchy you know it does its job i feel like all those sounds like line up and work really well together and there's 
this sound from Omnisphere? Obviously, I'm mixing with the, uh, the stereo width here, so if I were to turn this off, kind of see what I mean. It's just, like, really flat. But then once everything comes in, you know, the stereo width kind of reduces. Right? The bass here, the bass is kind of gritty. All the drums are, some are samples, some are addictive, and it's all just kind of combined into one. Some other layers as well that are here. Yeah, this is addictive drums that I just kind of froze into these little like toms. And then it just kind of just fills in the space. All the melodies, like those other main this is just a, a serum thing I did. You have LFO linked to a filter, which just kind of creates that little wobble. There's the same the same chords just put into a Promars and then arpeggiated. So without that, this I so I purposely layered these to create a little bit more width, but also layering the same exact sound creates like this phase kind of issue. But in some ways, it sounds kind of cool. So the sound kind of like just has some weird phasing. And like I said, um, no, anything that this I've had since, since nine, um, it might be, a uh, Ableton, like a, like a suite, maybe like you might need a, you might need suite to get it. Um, but no, I've had it since 10. I think or nine. Okay, I've, I've, yeah, I've had it since nine. It's a con it's just Ableton's convolution reverb. Um, I use it a lot. It's a nice little bonus, as you can see here. I use a lot of like repetitive instances of compression, where it's just kind of it's like kind of subtle. It just like layered, you know. Like with mastering too, a, a thing with mastering, I run my audio through Ozone, and then I turn the output of Ozone down like five decibels. And then I run that audio to my Pro L2, which is another maximizer slash limiter. And just doing it in stages just renders me better results. That's something I just follow. Um. So it sounds like without any drums here. this uh, okay I'm not actually using that the kick obviously um, the same kick I always use just really compressed really punchy and then obviously it's sign chained in a way that it cuts through really nice um
Yeah, I was like messing with other ideas earlier. Yeah, another little group I had. <laughs> yeah, there's so many different little things. Um... some movement you know um yeah and yeah, this thing's pretty fun I, i'm actually gonna i'm gonna save it again like this here we go cool. uh little detail elements here all the crashes are just different layers so there's like this guy That's a bunch of bunch of different things. I turn this up actually. Whoops. And then check this. That little peak here, that's definitely from the toms. So I'm gonna go in and just make sure I can catch that. It's a little bit more mellowed. Um, I might just turn it down a little bit actually. Yeah, that'll be my session for today. Um, I'm gonna hop off, but uh, yeah, I gotta eat. I gotta eat breakfast. I haven't eaten yet. But uh, yeah, I'll see y'all later. I'm gonna upload this to YouTube so y'all can kind of just go back and watch this one. And yeah, it was nice chatting, and I will see y'all soon. Adios.